subscribe, please. Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimple the Limp, and I'm here with a special treat for you all. I know you're looking down at this and you're going, you know, Space Infantry, it's, you know, been out for a while. You know, what's so special about this? Well, it's because this video is going to be a little side-by-side -side comparison of Space Infantry and Space Infantry Resurgence. This is going to be the new Space Infantry that is coming out from Lock and Load Publishing. Well, uh, you can already tell the box is a lot bigger, has a lot more stuff in it. I haven't even gone through all the stuff yet. Just came in today, uh, just took a quick peek at it. This is about as close to final production as you're going to get. It uh, It's right there on the cuffs. They're getting ready to, you know, start sending all this off to the printer and do the Kickstarter, do the whole thing that they're going to do with it. Uh, but before that, I am going to be doing, you know, a set of video, uh, videos on Space Infantry and all that good stuff. But I wanted to show you, hey, this is what was, and this is what is. This is what we are stepping up to and why you should be excited about this. Real quick, we'll take a peek at the old one. You can tell, obviously, the smaller box. This was back when uh, Lock and Load was owned by different personnel, managed by different personnel, and they really did try to step it up and improve the components uh, since that time frame. I actually still have a little note in here that Mike put in for me because Mike is actually the gentleman that sent me this game way back when uh, I had mentioned that I was trying to find a copy of Space Infantry because before I even started the channel, uh, I had wanted this game and I couldn't find it. You know, it was impossible to find this thing anywhere. I mentioned in a video he was nice enough to have it and he sent me this copy with the expansion already included. So I definitely appreciate that again, Mike, and I'm finally able to get it in front of the camera for you. But here's the instruction booklet. He printed off the updated one. We are not gonna go through all the rules because we're gonna be doing that later on with the new edition. Uh, here are some of the extra cards. Uh, I believe these are enemy cards. And then squad leader. And you can tell the, the graphics weren't the best. Pretty basic back in the day on what was uh, included in Space Infantry. This was part of the expansion, the Hive expansion. I'll show you guys some of these cards because it really does step up. Let's see if you can see how thick those are. Not very thick, kind of like a thick poster board uh, on these. Just let you peek at what some of these were. And this was like a, a map you could take and put together. You guys see, you know, line it up and it would create uh, random scenarios for you. So that was a expansion for uh, Space Infantry. Here's a quick reference sheet that he had printed off as well. And then we have some of the enemy sheets. I remember all the specific rules. It's been a little bit since I played this game. I'm looking forward to trying it again. And it's it's pretty much it's paper. It's not thick cardstock even. It's just paper on these mercenary forces. We had mutants. Uh, this is the turn record track with the special orders that uh, would be down there at the bottom. You'd place your resources here, like med packs and grenades. These are the standard sheets of what a mission would be. So you would start wherever it's dead start. You'd have your one little uh, counter that represented your Marines. As you were moving through, you'd have a deck of cards that represented what Marines you were taking on the mission. And you'd go through attempting to get so many successes at certain areas, fighting enemies along the way with your firearms and melee skill, and you try to accomplish whatever the mission happened to be. Had another mission there on the back. But again, paper. That way you guys can hear it. Let's see, this is also, this is what the expansion came in. Had another turn record track. We're not gonna look at all the components that came with it. You guys can see it's a lot of paper and then we've got our counters a little counter tray down here at the bottom and let you guys take a peek at this you see they were the thin not the white uh cardstock ones but the thin brown ones so i mean not bad i mean they, they were decent counters no problem with them but they were a little thin and this used the chip draw mechanic that's what these counters are up here which some people liked and some people didn't like it, it kind of depended on your preference because it gave you an ability to either know you were in an advantage because low numbers have been drawn so you knew if you were 
drawing for your guys, you were more likely to get high numbers or you knew you were at disadvantage because the enemy, uh, you had already drawn low numbers and you knew it was more likely the enemy was going to get the high numbers. So it kind of goes either way. I could see it if you still like the chit draw, taking and doing the draw for your guys, then putting the counters back in, doing it for the enemy. You know, something like that if you still want to stick with the, the classic space infantry chit draw mechanic. But that's basically what you got. It was a handful of counters and some sheets that had missions on them and you would you know, move your counter around. Wasn't an intense game, not very difficult and definitely a little thinner box than I would prefer. So let's slide this out of the way and take a look at what we have coming out. Resurgence, I like the name of that, Resurgence, and you can already tell by the graphics on the box, they really have tweaked things, tried to make it look better. I mean, this box is heavy as hell. Love that. Show you guys the back of it. Solitaire playability is through the roof since uh, it, it can be played solo. It's primarily played solo. Uh, complexity is listed down as low because it is rather low. It's not an incredibly difficult game. Uh, it takes you a couple of rounds to get your head around it. There are some good playthroughs uh, online, and I will be having uh, some playthroughs and tutorials up myself. So it'll be fairly easy to learn. Now the rule book, you can see Spiral Bound. Definitely love that. They have switched to doing that for their rule books. Makes it so much easier. And this is just one nice rule book. It is just like the rule book now for lock and load tactical and nations at war the new rule books that they're putting out they're doing space infantry the exact same way so real good stuff you can tell it is a lot lot thicker though there's a lot more going on in here than was in the other one i have not had a chance to read through all of it yet i just barely glanced at it so i'm not entirely sure on where the rules differ between resurgence and uh, the old one, we'll take and get into that later when I have some uh, playthroughs going on. You can see here, though, that the hive is included flat out into the game. So that's not even going to be expansion. They're, you know, putting all the what was right back into the game. So you're not going to be missing out on anything uh, there from the start. Uh, let's see. They've got campaign play, which was really cool before on the fact that you could have guys level up, get new skills, buy new troops, and all that throughout your campaign. Uh, Solo McLaughlin is actually one of the first YouTubers I started watching, and she did a, a long playthrough on Space Infantry. So we got campaign play, special campaigns, multiplayer, which I have no idea how they do the multiplayer. I'll have to read that up. Uh, game variants, the horde. So a lot of cool stuff. The basic rules, though, I think just go up here to 10 with the frequently overlooked rules. So just to learn the base game to play, you're gonna be reading from the index uh, this first bit up until vehicles. And then after that, that's when you get into the stuff that's outside the extras uh, with the game. Really do like the manual. Ooh, let me have the back here. Oh, look at this. I didn't even see this earlier. They've got sheets that you can scan and print out for your campaign games. I really like that. That's good shit right there. Good call. Look at that. Different squad, Miko squad. Wow, I missed that. I like this edition. Wow, man, they've got a lot in here. Campaign log. Okay, and it looks like a glossary there is back. So, oh, cool. Definitely look forward to showing you guys all that. Let's take a look at the components because I know that's one of the big things you guys want to see. One of the first things I noticed when I opened it was this big stack of hive tiles. And just look how big these are compared uh, to the old one. And actually, let me grab those out so you guys can see something here. Where were they? Oh, uh, where are they? There they are. Okay. One of the things you'll notice that the previous locations were printed on the, the tile. So, good God, I mean, look at the size difference. Uh, were printed right on the tile, so you couldn't change it. These are not like that. You can see that it just says high. Are they double-sided? No, just single-sided. Now, they might be double-sided when they're printed, and they just uh, did mine this way because it's a prototype copy, so... Just wait and determine it later when we know for sure what they're doing. But you're gonna have these like tokens, like this. Let's grab some of these out 
so you guys can see them. Uh, and it's this <laughs> the box has that cool burnt smell. And it just makes me think of like happy times and prototype games and, and stuff like that. So I really do like that. So you'll have these little tiles that you can take and place in these different locations and it's going to randomize it. So not only do you have a big stack of tiles to take and use, but they're going to be interchangeable. So you won't have the same map each time. It's going to vary. That brings a whole lot of variety. If the rules are the same, just with that one change done to it, it's going to take the game to a whole, whole nother level. So I definitely am looking forward to that. And I actually don't even think these go here because I just found the stack labeled Hive. So these are the little Hive cards. You can see same type thing, uh, different locations that are in there. Let's see. And then we have even more locations. Let's flick through a couple of these and let you guys see what some of them look like. There's a lot in each bag. So I'm trying not to mix anything up since I don't quite know what everything goes with yet. So I don't want to inadvertently make a mistake here. Let's see. Scout, base, demolition, advance, scout, base, science, climb. So it's like how you had to get previous successes that we talked about. Here, you would have to have someone who has the climb skill, and two means you need two successes to proceed through that node. And then up here at the top left, three plus, so you would roll on a d6. And they actually, they have a variety with the way it works. I'm not gonna get into all of it because it's a little long-winded to explain, but they came up with a way where you can roll a d6 and get a, a variety of zero to eight. I'll explain it later when we get into the, the specifics, but you need a couple of dice and it, uh, it can go in that direction. So real kind of neat system. But you'll ro you'd roll, and if you got a three plus, then you would have encounter A, which for whatever mission, it'll tell you, okay, A means that you encounter this, mutants or monsters or whatever the hell you're encountering. Zero G, oh, I remember that from the first one. They had zero G encounters where your guys could be slowed up or if they had zero, tr zero G training, they could get through it. A lot of the same type stuff that you saw in the original um, Space Infantry, but better graphics. You see it's got images right there. They've got everything listed down nice and neat on here. And don't hate on the things for being a little dingy. These are laser cut, they are prototype, so they're not gonna be final components that you guys will see later. Security skill, intelligence skill, advance, advance, advance. Engineering, computer, so stuff that if you played the, the previous one, you will have seen that before. Let me take and put these down. Let's see what else we have here. We've got a huge deck of cards. Flesh Eaters, these have to be the enemy cards, maybe? Let's see what we've got here. Let's take a look at them. Okay. Uh, is this skills? Xeno Mind. Maybe these are for multiplayer. Gives you things that you can roll. Fury, ones, yeah, okay, multiplayer. The Xeno player, so the alien player. Type one enemy unit can attack twice this round. So it's probably like an action deck for your opponent. And then here are the enemies. Let's see what we have here. Void spiders. And look how thick this deck is, and there's more than one in here. Void spiders, void spiders. And what else is there? A lot of void spiders. Good grief. How many void spiders are there? Uh, Dark Roots Adult, Dark Root Creepers, more adults, Mutants Outlier, more Outlier, Mutants Abomination, Hybrid Outlier, uh, Sitonians, uh, or maybe you don't pronounce, maybe the C silent, Thonians. Oh, we'll see. And you can see they've got different graphics than they had before. Tentacles, if this card activates with a five plus random number, that's what the RN stands for, is random number. Uh, target unit is grappled. Interesting. Old one, young, xenotype, gestalt, alpha. So a lot of cool enemy looking cards in here. I like the thought that they've got an action deck 
uh, for multiplayer. If you do want to play it multiplayer, you do have the option there. Let's set these down. It looks like this is another deck of cards. Ooh, unit selection. So this should have some of our guys in it. Let's see if I'm right on that. So there's more enemy cards in it. Uh, where are the enemies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, Titan, that's gonna be one of ours. Okay, so I'll set these down and see what we have here. A vehicle, heavy armor, damage four plus, AV pen, not sure what that means yet. Hit and runs, are, is this an enemy or is this one of ours? It looks like an enemy card, might be an enemy. Armored building, reinforce, see enemy, yeah. These have to be enemies. So they have buildings and armored vehicles in here now. That's new. I don't think that was in the uh, the first space infantry. What is this? Green recruit mines. The first time combat range is set to melee, the enemy suffers the effect of two grenades. May not be used in space missions. Maybe this is uh, equipment. Let's say on the back. Station, uh, strategic option. So whatever strategic option is, that's what these are. Better ammo during combat. Once per game, each success level gained at fire range deals two wounds to an enemy. Cool. Plasma grenade, plasma gun, med kit, plus 20 squad points. You gain 20 additional squad points to spend during squad selection. And if I remember previously, you had something like 120 or 140 points to spend on troops. So gaining 20 points is a big deal. One intel, two resources, maximum nine resources, which it was eight previously. I don't know if they kept that the same. Scout report, personal favor. And you guys can pause the video if you want to read some of these that I'm scrolling through. But if I go through every card, it's going to take uh, forever. Reinforce, you receive the following reinforcements points. One green, one line. Add this to your reinforcement area. Uh, Pylum ATV. If the current mission is a surface mission, you may use the Pylum ATV card. Let's see if we can find that. Is that? Yeah, here we go. Now we're getting into ours. So this is the ATV. You can see it's still got armor, has its health. Its firepower is a three, its melee is a five. And I can't remember, oh, it's been so long since I've played it. I can't remember if low numbers are good or high numbers are good. I'm thinking it was high numbers that was good. Uh, we'll find out when we play, but I am definitely looking forward to trying it out. Uh, steel bones marked one. What is this? A tank. We didn't have tanks in the previous one. It's got to be higher numbers are good because this has a higher firepower and it's a tank. It has four four, so I'm guessing it gets to shoot twice. But I'm not sure what it, the armor health thing is on that. I have to learn that. Squad leader. And you can see at the top left, uh, that should be their point cost. So 10 points for squad leader, uh, 10 points for medic who doesn't have a firepower, but does have a melee. Uh, Ram, I'm not sure what those are. Scientist, demolitionist. These must be the specialist uh, like you had previously. Cause, oh yeah, see below, they've got their skills listed down. An engineer can do computer engineering repair and you can see the skills are three, three, and five. Technician, three, three, and four for their different skills. Explorer. And zero G, okay, see we got a zero G team. They have the zero G skill at three. So my guess is that since most of this looks like it's lining up just with better graphics and better components, that this is just a, a nice facelift with a tweak to the rules to bring them to modern day. Assault team A, fire team B, which should be like your basic troops. You see their skill is advanced. And remember when we were looking through some of those location cards, uh, the advanced skill was listed down. So they should need to draw an advance or roll on a die rather. Now, a advance of three or better to get a success. And they would need however many to take and move on through that location. Salt Team B, zero, uh, another Zero G. Fire Team, Fire Team A, Fire Team B. Zero G. Assault. Flu, Flamer. We definitely want to try that one. In melee, use the flame special. Ooh. Shotgunners, ooh, the shotgunners were awesome. They got a, a bonus in melee. Only one shotgunner, I want more shotgunners. Salt snipers, 
they were good for range and heavy weapons. How does the heavy weapons only have a firepower of two? Maybe it's close range attacks. Maybe it's the lower number is better. Ah, oh, I can't remember. We will find out. You can see they're expensive. The 30 points for those guys. CC team, close. That should be close combat. So maybe it is the lower number is better. Maybe you have to hit or beat the number to succeed. So the lower number will make it better. Let's see. Flamer, shotgunners, heavy weapons, CC team. Must be the leveled up. Yeah, because these are showing 40 points. And you can see they've got armor, which is going to uh, deflect the first hit they take. Advanced training, plus one AP when rolling melee. You know, selection. So interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. I'm definitely looking forward to trying this out. Ah, there's so much cool stuff going on right now. I'm so busy. But I was definitely tickled when all this showed up. What are these large cards? I have no idea what this is. Okay, encounter and radiation zone, ambush tactics. Are these like little player aids, ammo depot? I am not sure what these are. Heavy dropship damage, activate one of uh, one unit of your choice, make one repair skill check. If you do not gain at least one success, decrease the turn limit by one. Mm -hmm. I am not sure what these encounters are for. I have to read the rule. Uh, tunnel encounters. Maybe this is for the hive system telling you how things are going to go. Or maybe these go with the campaign system. See, it says mission two, mission SA03, hive, mission H07. So a bunch of mission cards. Mission types, these, this, all this stuff has to go with setup. I'm thinking, or setting up your missions, or something along those lines. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, enemy activation. Are these the cards for them? Again, it's it's prototype components, so I'm not entirely sure. And don't count these as, you know, the the last of what it's going to be. Uh, just kind of letting you guys see it. I'm not. Not sure what this is yet. I have to read the rules and and learn it so I can tell you guys, but we will go through it in the playthrough. Let's set these down and see what other cool stuff that we do have in the box here. Looks like a handful of player aids. Cool. Sequence of play. Always useful. Uh, orders. We do remember that our leaders had orders that they could use. An enemy sheet. This looks like for a uh, large enemy, like your, your main enemy. It looks like it has multiple target points here. Body, mouth, tail. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, another order sheet. Our turn record track. Looks like they put this stuff in every single order. Try to mess with me. Armored building, the sheet to tell you about that. And we're back down to the sequence of play. And there's some more in here. These look like more enemy sheets. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this. All right. So, like, if you had a Class A encounter, you would roll. Your random number would tell you what you encountered. One scout, two scouts, four scouts, whatever it is. Or if it's a B encounter, or if it's a C encounter, and then you could be encountering the queen. So this tells you that, and then we've got the range table to determine what range the combat's going to be at, whether it's going to be at uh, melee or um, uh, fire range, range, range. Uh, void spiders here on the back. We've got mercenaries and enemy type queen. So another big enemy with the different spots, it looks like. The cybers, which were the robots and beast masters on the back of that. The battle drones, which I'm wondering how that's different from the Zypers, but we'll find out. And the dark roots, which that kind of looks like something out of uh, uh, Dark Souls. And flesh eater xenotypes. The titan, so that'll be cool. Mutants, which I think I played against those back in the day. Grav tank. Uh, Cyber sentinel. Nesotonians. 
And void spiders, I think we already showed those. Yep. All right, so all the different enemies you can fight against right there. Let's see what else we have. Oh, did they include these as well? Look at this. Look at this. Good God, so many player aids. Holy crap. All right, the maps are down there. All right, this is just a huge stack of player aids. We'll go through them here real quick. These are card uh, cardstock copies of those things that I was excited about in the back of the rule book. So you have these to scan and make copies of if you want to do that. Looks like they do have a selection of each of them. And there's that. And then is this the mission sheets telling you what to do? It looks like it. Mission H05 Underworld. Mission H008 Invasion. It gives you your base number requirements, objectives, special rules, special node table. So evidently there are special nodes. We'll have to see. And it looks like there's a good chunk of these. Let's set that down for six. So yeah, a bunch of different missions. Uh, five sheets front and back of different missions that you can do. Oop, I do apologize. I bumped the ca uh, to, uh, camera. I am not 100% sure on how to use these yet. That's probably very similar to how you use the previous ones uh, to set up your missions. We will go through it. Like I said, I'll do playthroughs and I'll do videos to show you guys all that. This is really more of an unboxing just to show you guys what all is in here. Uh, more sheets for your squads. Again, heavy guard stock that you can take and make copies of. One sided just shows your squad. You can put down your leader, your core units, support units, any vehicles, reinforcements, company, and then your know, special traits down over here to the side. Got a handful of these that you can scan and make copies of as well. And I have no idea. More missions. Look at this. Good God, there's missions everywhere. Mission, I don't know, is that S special mission 017? I have no idea what this is supposed to mean. It has enemy activation procedure. Enemy area A. This, okay, yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like the enemies get put down in a random location and fight that way. We'll have to see how that works. And, okay, cool, co-op player card. So you can keep track of uh, your stuff and their stuff, it looks like. So neat, I like that player eight. And then I think all of these are the mission maps themselves. What is all this? These are big, so I'm trying to pull them back from the camera so you guys can see this. Intelligence point track. A, the enemy is trying to jump ship with the data core, get to the escape pods before they can escape. It looks like they've got stuff listed down. I'm not sure, do these things line up? What is all this enemy area A? This is so different, a mission 16. This, like I said, this is so different from the first one. I'm not entirely sure on how you have to use this. Like I said, I haven't um, uh, read the rules yet, so I'm kind of thumbing my way through this. Wow, this looks interesting. Outdoor areas, indoor areas, question mark, danger areas, war theater. And I'm thinking that you take all those little cards that I was showing you earlier and they'll be randomized on the sheets to determine what type of area you actually are in. Or maybe this is a campaign sheet. I wonder if that's what it is because this says mission 14 or maybe there's special nodes for uh, mission 14. Let's see what a couple more of these are. Another one, map part A. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm not going to keep going through these because I'm I'm not entirely 100% sure on what I'm looking at. And I don't want to take and tell you guys some bum scoop. But I promise I will go through these, learn the game, and show it to you guys here very soon. I do like that these sheets that I was showing you guys, this is made out of the same thick material that they make their... Um, maps out of for lock and load tactical so very nice thick card stock for the maps and you're going to need probably a piece of plexiglass or something to hold them down because they are big they do have a fold in them and since it is thick good 
quality cardstock, it's not going to take and tear, but it's also not going to lay as flat as like just a generic sheet of paper is going to. So just one thing to keep in mind. And then the last thing in the box, we've got a few sheets of counters. Looks like here are our random numbers that are included. Turn counter, the, I forget what that was called, but basically you could draw that and then you would get a bonus. I guess these are hit markers. Grenades, med kits, intel kits, plasma grenades. And then that's what the backside is. Oh, cool. Stem packs, ammo, intel again, med kits, light, smoke grenades, flame markers down here at the bottom. A lot of cool looking stuff. And over here we have minus one AP, ammo counter, active camo, aid to camp brawler. I guess these are skills, possibly. Uh, plus one to success level, smoke, event markers. Not sure what these X's are. We'll find out later. Shaken markers, grapple, no fire, a list of mutations. I'm guessing extra possible hit markers. That's what I'm thinking that might be. And the backside. Showing you guys that AP down here at the bottom. And then we have our last sheet. And again, the counters do look a little dingy because they are laser cut compared to the normal uh, die cut that you get in the cardboard. So they are gonna have a little soot around the edges that I haven't cleaned off yet because I haven't punched them. So they're not normally dingy. They're just like that because they're laser cut right now. And then we have our tokens for our, all our guys, fire team, assault teams, a, B, squad leaders, zero G teams, your specialist here, I like that, AP tank. And then we've got enemy markers and obstacles, covers, craters, heavy gun, modifiers, mines, shields. Ooh, laser blade. Okay, that's cool. I want that. I don't care what it costs. I want that. <laughs> Definitely. And that's the back of it. Pretty much similar to what was there on the front. So plenty of counters. Definitely looking forward to trying that out. If you enjoyed the first Space Infantry, if it was something that you enjoyed, I would definitely recommend getting in on the ground floor of Space Infantry uh, Resurgence. Just because from what I've seen, it looks like they just took and updated everything, improved the components, uh, brought it into the modern day uh, for you guys and the fact that it has the uh, expansion, uh, blah, expansion already built into it so you don't have uh, separate stuff to worry about it's all right in the box nice big box and it, come on if you guys have bought stuff from lock and load publishing before you know their counters are excellent their uh, maps are excellent they work hard to put out good quality i do believe this is coming to uh, kickstarter soon i'm not entirely sure when it's coming to Kickstarter. I know they're finishing up with World at War 85, so I do believe this will be maybe not the very next one coming up. It might be the one after, but it will be coming up soon. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. All right, that's gonna be it for me. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.